Hi everyone, welcome back to World of Pharmacology. Today we are going to look into the topic peptic ulcer drugs. Please like, share, and subscribe. So let's start. So what are peptic ulcers? Peptic ulcers are painful wound or sores that occurs in that part of the GIT which is exposed to gastric acid and pepsin. This gastric acid and pepsin are produced by stomach in order to digest the food. And this peptic ulcer is a result of imbalance between aggressive factor and defensive factor. The aggressive factors are acids, pepsin, NSAID, and H. pylori. Defensive factors are mucus, bicarbonate and prostaglandin. Also, the excessive use of alcohol, tea, coffee and certain drugs like corticosteroids, reserpine, indomethacin also causes ulcer. Now, let's see how gastric secretion is regulated. The figure shows the structure of gastric parietal cells. H2R in the figure represents histamine receptor. G bar CCKR is gastrin or cold cystokine receptor. M3R is muscarinic receptor. This histamine, gastrin, and acetylcholine activates proton pump to release hydrochloric acid. This histamine binds to histamine receptor site and generate CAMP that release calcium ions which in turn stimulates H plus K plus ATPase or proton pump to give hydrochloric acid. Whereas this gastrin and acetylcholine binds to cholecystoptin and muscarinic receptors respectively and acts through this phospholipase C IP3 DAG pathway which causes the release of intracellular calcium ions which in turn stimulates proton pump to release hydrochloric acid whereas this prostaglandin has an inhibitory action. Prostaglandin is produced by the gastric mucosa and it binds to prostaglandin receptor and it inhibits the gastrin release as well as CAMP generation. Now let's see how we treat peptic ulcer. First one is through reduction of gastric acid secretion. Second one is by neutralization of gastric acid. Third is using ulcer protective and fourth one is with the help of anti H pylori drugs. So these are the four approaches for the treatment of peptic ulcer. So how this reduction of gastric acid secretion is done using H2 antihistamine, which includes simetidine, ranitidine, famotidine, and roxetidine. Second one is using proton pump inhibitor. The drugs are omeprazole, pantoprazole, raviprazole, and lansoprazole. Third one is using anticholinergics, pyrocypine, propanthalin, oxyphenolium. Fourth one is using prostaglandin analogs, that is misoprostol. Second one is the neutralization of gastric acid, that is using antacids. Antacids are of two types, systemic and non-systemic. Systemic antacids that are used for the treatment are sodium bicarbonate and sodium citrate. Non-systemic antacids used are magnesium hydroxide, magnesium tricylicate, aluminum hydroxide gel, and calcium carbonate. The ulcer protectives that are used for the treatment of peptic ulcer are sulfate, colloidal bismuth, substrate. And the anti H pylori drugs are also used, which includes amoxicillin, clarithromycin, metronidazole, titidazole, and tetracycline. Now let's see the drugs in detail. First one is H2 antihistamines. They are also known as H2 antagonist or H2 blockers. 
they act by blocking the action of histamines thereby inhibiting acid secretion the drugs in in h2 antihistamines are semitidin ranitidin and famotidin they are used for the treatment of peptic ulcer solinger ulcer syndrome gastroesophageal reflux disease and for the treatment of aspiration pneumonia there are certain adverse effects for semitidin they are it has an anti androgenic action that is it displaces dihydrotestosterone from its cytoplasmic binding site it causes gynecomastia in men that is development of breast and also it causes increased plasma prolactin level or galacteria in female that is nip, nipple discharge in female next one is ranitidin ranitidin has a furanran and is five times more potent than semitidin the incidence of side effect is low for ranitidin famotidin has a thiazol ring it is highly potent and has longer duration so it's more suitable for solinger ulcer syndrome and also in the treatment of aspiration pneumonia next one is propyl pump inhibitor as the name suggests this propyl pump inhibitors inhibit the propyl pump or h plus k plus atps pump in the parietal cells of stomach omeprazole is the prototype member of substituted vancomycin this omeprazole is inactive at neutral ph but when the ph is less than 5 it rearranges to two cationic forms which are sulfonic acid and sulfonamide which reacts covalently with the sulfa hydro or thion groups of proton pump and inactivates it irreversibly this proton pump inhibitors are given in dense recorded form because they are weak bases and can be destroyed by the gastric acid so they are given in the end recorded form also this proton pump inhibitors are given orally early morning in empty stomach uses are for the treatment of peptic ulcer gastroesophageal reflux disease solinger ulcer syndrome adverse effects are minimal which includes nausea loose stools headache and abdominal pain next one is antacids this antacids do not decrease acid production they neutralize gastric acid and raises the ph of gastric content and as it's of two types systemic and acids and non systemic this demerits of systemic and acids are they disturbs acid base balance and are absorbed systemically example are sodium bicarbonate and sodium citrate whereas non systemic and acids are poorly absorbed this non systemic and acids are basic compounds and they react with gastric hydrochloric acid and form corresponding salt so they do not disturb the acid base balance examples of non systemic and acids are magnesium hydroxide aluminum hydroxide and calcium carbonate this and acids are now no longer used for healing peptic ulcer they are employed for the treatment of acidity and usually as over the counter operation they are also used for non ulcer dyspepsia and minor episodes of heartburn next drug is anticholinergics anticholinergics are the one that block the action of acetylcholine this anticholinergic produces the volume of gastric juice without raising the ph example is pyrazepine the introduction of H2 blockers and proton pump inhibitors has sent them into oblivion. Next drug is prostaglandin analogs. Prostaglandin E1, prostaglandin E2, and prostaglandin I2 are produced in gastric mucosa, and they have a protective role as they inhibit acid secretion and promotes mucus and carbonic acid secretion. Example is misoprostol. the adverse effect of prostaglandin analogs are diarrhea abdominal cramps and uterine bleeding 
Next one is isoprotective grafts. These grafts form a covering over the ulcer and prevents its exposure to gastric acid. The drugs are sucrafate. This sucrafate is an aluminum salt of sulfated sucrose. At a pH less than 4, it mo its molecules polymerizes to form a sticky layer and covers the ulcer base. Thus, it prevents its exposure to gastric acid. The side effects of sucralfate is constipation. Another drug is colloidal bismuth substrate. The mechanism of action is not clear. The probabilities are it acts through the stimulation of prostaglandin E2 production. This colloidal bismuth substrate and mucus form a glycoprotein bicomplex which causes the ulcer base and act as a barrier to the hydrochloric acid. It also detaches H. pylori from surface of that is Helicobacter pylori from surface of mucosa and directly kills this organism. These are the probabilities of mechanism of, of action of colloidal bismuth substrate. Adverse effects are blackening of tongue and bismuth toxicity. Next is anti H. pylori drugs. Anti H. pylori drugs are used to treat ulcer caused due to Helicobacter pylori. This Helicobacter pylori is a gram negative bacillus that causes ulcer. It attaches to surface epithelium beneath the mucus and has high UVA's activity. So it produces ammonia, which maintains a neutral microenvironment around the bacteria and promotes back diffusion of H plus ion. And the H. pylori therapy is recommended for ulcer patients who test positive for H. pylori. The antimicrobials that is effective against H. pylori are amoxicillin, clarithromycin, tetracycline, and metronidazole or tinidazole. However, any single drug is ineffective. A number of two drug and three drug regimen of one or two weeks have been tested, reporting 60 to 96 percentage of eradication rates. Thank you for watching. See you in the next class. Bye.